I got laid off. I got fired. I got fired. But here's the thing. I was a binge guy. I remember seeing her at the local titty bar. I feel dirty right now just telling it into a microphone. We're broken around here. Working man sucks. Everybody, welcome back to the Working Class Holes Podcast. I'm your host, Ed McGowan, here in the break room with my co-host, Josh Ricardo. Edward. Up, buddy? How are you? I'm well. How are you? Ah, I'm good, dude. I'm one year older today. Yeah, I haven't I seen you in a while. I didn't even, I found out like late last I night. Know, yeah, I happy know. birthday, dude. Thank you very much. And for my birthday, uh, I put some feelers out because I said, you know, let's get a real working class old actor in here. Uh, I've known this guy for a while. I know of him for a while, not just from his work on Orange is the New Black, but also uh, we have some people in common that are important people. The one and only big fella, Mike Houston. Mike! Yeah. Hello. Hello. Tell me about Hello. one of your day jobs, Mike. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> well, uh, you know, I'll tell you about uh, the first day job I had that really kind of woke me up to uh, <laughs> accepting the world for as it is was right out of school, out of college, and I was dating a girl out here. I'm from Colorado. Okay. And so um, I got a job out of college out in Massachusetts, because that's where she was going to school. It was a plumbing and heating company. Ooh. Yeah. Nice. Real Speaking exciting. Old Philly dirtbags like, like over here. So like Boston. So yeah, 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 yeah. Boston well, plumbers. More like Lynn plumbers. <laughs> oh. And I, you know, if you've ever been to Lynn, uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. In Massachusetts, uh, the, the the moniker is Lynn Lynn, City of Sin. Uh, never go out once you come in. <laughs> nice. Or, or reverse. <laughs> Never come out once you go. It's something like that. But anyway. It's like but, a trash bag. But I'll tell you what. They check in, but they don't check out. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> but that, like, the thing about it was crazy was that, you know, it was a smart company in the way they handle it. They're like, all right, college kid, first thing you're going to do, you're going to go in the warehouse for a year, right? And you're a and big now, old dude, too. Yeah. When they're, I turned out I'm not most, most of the guys in Boston, working class guys are big old guys. Yeah. <laughs> um, what was crazy about it was like, it was good because it, like that way, we all are on the same. And you're acting. You want to be an actor at this point. You're still. No, I'm not. You don't even, know yet. I haven't even touched it. Oh, would you shit. go? To, would you graduate from college with? with, with uh, like, political science. Political science. Yeah. Right, cool. So now you're just great your first for acting. Gig. <laughs> <laughs> it's your first gig uh, as college <laughs> has <laughs> nothing to do with my degree. A, yeah. Yeah. A manual it's, labor. And the I only reason it. I took it was because it was the only job that offered to fly me out to the East Coast. Oh, uh, this to is, get near so this the girl. Because of the girl. All yeah. Because of the girl. Uh -huh. What uh, we do for the girl. Well, yeah. Yeah. And, and also, fought. it's so funny, though. You look back and you go, what are, man, I did that for her. And then I was like, well, I kind of get it. Guess I did it for myself because now I'm on a podcast talking about uh, it. Yeah, isn't that indirectly like <laughs> men always like well, I followed some pussy and then I figured out oh, I, oh hey, no no it was I always about me. Years, so do. It was always about me. It was never about you. <laughs> which is the bullshit lie I told her the entire time. I was like no 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 I did this because I've never been out the East Coast. Do you know how much uh, I love plumbing. Yeah yeah it's like it's 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 my lifeblood. <laughs> And, and so yeah, it was um, it was a it was tough one. Size and plumbing, those are the two things, babe. They go right together every time, you know. <laughs> like as I'm fixing your your outlet, uh, what do you, I can't remember the terms anymore. <laughs> no wonder you didn't stick with it. Something like that. Shakespeare, you fixing can remember the thing, fixing the thing in the sink while I'm talking to you about you know binomics. Um, but yeah, so you know, going to the warehouse right off the out of the gate, and the problem wasn't the work. The work was fine. It was that. You had to be there at 6 a.m. And uh, I lived, I didn't know anything about Boston. So I immediately moved to a town called Brighton, which is like, you know, it's a little mm -hmm. suburb of Boston. But to go from Brighton to Lynn, it's about a 45 minute drive. And so I didn't know that. I, I had no idea what I was doing. And so I, I put my roots down there and then, like, man, getting up at 4 30 in the morning. Yeah, dude. Oh, and piece, then on the weekends. Pipe. Oh, and then you had to work, then you had to work every other Saturday. Till six o'clock, like it was. Ooh, yeah, those dude. jobs are horrible. And it's not a good way to move to a brand new city and meet new people. No, <laughs> six days a week, and uh, you're going to be up at four a.m. Yeah, that's right. Day. And the guys you're hanging out with, none of them want to hang out afterwards. <laughs> no, you're all yeah, exhausted. Like full family. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, or or they've got their thing that they do, and <laughs> right. you're not part of it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's really what it is. This yeah. new guy along. Yeah, yeah. I can imagine no, Philly's the same though. Like no room for new members. When you right move now. to a, when you move to a place like Philly or Boston, like. And again, being from Colorado, we're 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 so dumb sometimes and and trusting right away. Like yeah. go to a bar. But I'd be your friends within five minutes. I've been to Denver a lot. Yeah, parts it's of Colorado. Man, it's, it's a, a great beautiful space. Beautiful naivete, but if you're not from there, it is aggravating. It could be aggravating if you're not from As there. As you're a New Yorker and now, and exactly, and I do see it when I go back now. <laughs> but it's also crazy when you when you're from there and you go to a place and you're like, "Hey, what's up, man? I'm I'm Mike. Nice to see you. I can't wait to work with you." And they're like, "Who the fuck are you?" Like. <laughs> 
Yeah. Put in your time, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it took six months before I had a friend. Wow. And this That's was probably... this was a work friend in the warehouse. <laughs> oh, wow. It took me like six months to really get to a point where he invited me over for dinner. I was yeah. like, cool, this is going really great. Like, I'm so glad that the only person I have in this place is my girlfriend and, and now this, Dan. This this guy Dan. <laughs> Dan and my girlfriend. And you know then what? I met Joe. And anyway, but that was, I would say, every time I think about one of the harder day jobs of my life, that one was it because just the hours were just so brutal. Yeah. And it's what's... also a thing that I... All due respect, like it's a fascinating uh, uh, job and and it's mad important. I did learn that. Yeah, um, but just not for me. <laughs> but what I love about that story is like it is East Coast. Every job I've ever had on the East Coast um, that is like that. It's kind of like prison in a way where oh. the people won't let you into the inner circle or even talk to you until they feel like because they know people. If they last six months, it's safe to say. Well, here's Hi, the, I'm Dan. You here's know what I mean? The first yeah. thing I learned, because I worked in a factory, uh, mm-hmm. oh, and that's it was right. like the same kind of thing. The first thing I learned was don't really, it, there's no chit chat until after lunch. <laughs> oh, yeah. There's no <laughs> chit chat until after lunch. Like, <laughs> that's when your chit chat happens. Like, everybody. Until like, I had two cigarettes, <laughs> yeah. two cups of coffee, a sandwich. <laughs> then maybe I'll talk to little Eddie McGowan running quality control exactly. on the. <laughs> <laughs> a 50 year old guy no 401k his body's beat if you time shit. it right though if you time it right in, in Boston if, if you catch it during the first break at Duncan like that you oh, can get yeah. a few words in there the yeah, first yeah, 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 words. yeah 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 and then what you do is you start to pay attention to what people are ordering at Duncan so you could like be like them be like I have got to think make these guys think I'm from here like sure so you know I'm gonna make friends here that's so funny. Oh, oh that's man, funny. but I Duncan, Duncan's like the place, man. Like every, you know, everyone knows this in, in Massachusetts, especially. Oh yeah, that that yes. Starbucks for Massachusetts. It's on every corner. But yeah, that was kind of like if you could get in there in the line. <laughs> oh, that's so fun. And find your way into a conversation. Yeah, that was it. Yep. It's all about the like the Duncan maneuvers. <laughs> like, dude, you're thinking about it. You're like. I shouldn't have got that bear claw. Man, I'm telling you right now. <laughs> I fucked up. That whole the bear Super Bowl yeah. commercial with, uh, with Ben Affleck of the order. and his whole his oh, new, yeah, that his was new great. Duncan thing. I'm like, man, every one of us has one of those. Why does he get all the celebration? Like, I ordered from you every day in Lynn, Massachusetts. I should get my own. And now look at me. Well, how? Uh, when do you start acting then? <laughs> I actually started getting into it um, uh, 2002, 2002, 2003. So I moved out in 99 to Boston. Okay. And then um, I worked. So I had that job. And then I actually had another corporate job. And, you know, again. Yeah, I'm the corporate if, guy. The yeah, if you look at uh, it on the outside, it looks amazing, me. right? It's oh, like, yeah, oh, yeah. yeah, man, you get your own computer and you get your own <laughs> no, laptop. Hey, you know, one and oh two, that's a pretty big deal. You get your own little computer. I mean, when my first uh, I got fired for that. my first trip <laughs> was amazing, was out to heat, was out to New York. Like, they flew us out when I, when I got hired there. Uh, my... Uh, orientation was in the city and I'm like oh my god I'm getting flown to New York City and they're taking us to nice, nice Damn, restaurants for a and dude with kind of dirtbag jobs that you've had so far they keep flying you out uh, yeah yeah like it's, a uh, listen man, man I, 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 it's my persona I, yeah. I command it you know charm. without putting it in a writer when I didn't have writers I still had writers apparently I didn't know that <laughs> um, but yeah so I worked for that company and again I just realized that 9 to 5 was not for me and so I got I got canned from that job uh, the internet place and uh that's when you know on the way home from being fired i ta- i was talking to my mom cuz i'd never been fired at this point it's kind of devastating it's how'd, crazy how they do it how they do it? how was oh, the it was it was pretty brutal cuz it was it was so hilarious was it a layoff I was given or a, a warning. fire no it was a fire oh yeah cuz you get the but warning but i was given a warning getting... saying if you're late again cuz i just that's another thing guys like i am not the most punctual person well i wasn't i'm yeah. way more now um but i'm not great at punctuality and so especially when i think 20 minutes what am I gonna get done in 20 minutes that's gonna change the day that I can't do with 20 minutes at the end of the day yeah. I love that I yeah. define it and I would I do it that all mentality. the time even though they would tell me I'd be like <laughs> I hear what register. you're saying but I'm right <laughs> yeah like so I'm gonna keep doing me here's what's great about it is it took us all to get like terrible jobs within our dream <laughs> job like I, I'm hoping for this terrible act I'll be so on time like it took you getting yeah. jobs and what you love to go you know I really gotta be on time yeah wow <laughs> wow people really have been wait. oh wait what if they loved their job the way I love acting could that even be oh possible? man that probably drives them crazy when I'm late <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so yeah. Yeah. yeah it's so funny and not until yeah. you love something do you realize like oh there's a these are a yeah, place th- for yeah, a yeah I forgot it's not about me all the time <laughs> oh, dang it 
But then the thing what was crazy about the whole thing was like I wasn't I was destined to get fired from this place because one the relationship was ending like going through a breakup with that same girl, and then uh, they gave me the warning like if it wasn't late, your tardiness <laughs> your, your habitual tardiness it was the breakup really is what it, oh man I, I mean I also worked a couple nights as a doorman at a bar to pay rent for the place we were living in together oh. so I was I was kind of burning the candle yeah and then, um, dude but. Uh, the, the day I got fired, I, I was late, but it was infuriating because the night before, I was at my bar for a going away party for one of our door guys who was going to Afghanistan. Oh, he, was a, he was a Marine. He was oh, an enlisted damn. Marine, and he got uh, uh, pulled into Afghanistan, and so we were having this going away party for him, and I remember like I left at 8.30 p.m. I didn't have a drink because I was like, I cannot yeah. be late to work anymore. I went home. I just chilled, went to bed on time early, and I slept through my alarm. <laughs> I couldn't believe it. I, I was like, so I wake Fucking up. Clothes laid out perfectly, ironed. I'm telling you, like, right I, there. Like, I had it set <laughs> so that I would not be late ever again on this day, and then fucking wake up at nine o'clock. And I'm like, this is insane. You're not just late. You woke up so, at the start of the uh, that's what day. I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. So then I get there, and I'm like, it's like dead man walking. Like uh, I walk okay. into the office, everyone's looking at me. The the VP of my department's like her door is like right by where my desk was. Oh, they were just waiting to fire you. Oh, yeah, they because were. she went to the to the people at the door. Like as soon as, soon as you here, see that guy, come in, it, as soon as he gets in here, I want his ass in my office. in my office. Oh, no. And while he's in my office. I want a box on his desk with all his stuff put in it, and so wow. that's what it, that's when it went down. Damn. And that's they were like, crazy. That's "We told you, they do know, but they no. said we told you, we told you, told you. yeah, tardiness, a couple missed meetings here and there. Oh, there's again, other things. bit of a tailspin when the breakup happens, you know, like a couple was, of personal problems you brought to the office, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, just a few. Well, I didn't bring them; they just showed up after I got that damn job. Um, and then, so then I get I get fired, and I tell my mom on the phone that day. I was like, I, I got fired. I don't I don't even know how to process that. And then she was the one. She was like, maybe you should try acting, you know, as a as a job for a while. Like she's like, you're young, you, you know, you love doing it. And I was like, uh, that was not expected. Yeah, I did not expect to hear dude. that in that's that moment. Great. It was cool. That's yeah, crazy. That's now, granted, cool. it took me another three years to to finally get my head around what that meant. Yeah, right. Because then I get into restaurants. And I will say, you know, yeah, we, we can talk. Guy. Yeah, we can talk for hours about shitty situations in restaurants. But I don't think I've actually ever had a, a bad day job, like a, restaurant day job. It's a party job. Yeah, oh, yeah. It's and it's what you make of too. it, too, right? Yeah, now, some absolutely. of the some of the restaurants I've worked at, are, yeah, sure. You know, but but some, the, the people I've met yeah. and some of the things that have come from that, like, I, it's hard. I was thinking about this when we were talking about what this is about. Yeah. And it was like, I oh, mean... I mean, if we talk about the last 20 years of my life, it's all been restaurants and bars. Yeah. Dude, I went to a TGI Friday's reunion. Like, Bro. it was a, like a, a reunion. Oh, you're like a Hall of Famer for we, TGI Friday's. We were, like all worked at this TGI Friday's, and somebody gathered everybody. That's awesome. awesome. Heads of first ballot Hall of Famer. <laughs> TGI <laughs> waiter. Facebook. On Facebook, and we all met at the bo- at the after bar that we used to go to. Yeah. And it was like, it was probably like 15. There's guys who've been in war together that don't meet as much as you and the <laughs> TGI you, people. Did the, <laughs> Did the ceremonial coat have just a bunch of flair on it? And, <laughs> no you know, one, the, no you, one brought any flair. It was here. The you finish was down I, here. I, like all that Mike, right? I, I, mean, I think it was explicitly stated. No flair, please. <laughs> <laughs> all right. I love this. This is my favorite question because you're one of your biggest roles is owners and new black. Yeah. I, I always ask comedians that have done like late night shows, mm. and then like we had we had a couple on that were like, yeah. So I did my late night set and did Colbert or whatever, did Fallon, and then next morning I was at my my storage unit job. Like yeah, just, yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you have any of those moments where you're shoot, like you're on set shooting something where you're like, this is everything I've ever asked for. And I thought, wow, this is it. Once this happens, I will be making money <laughs> and I will be a professional actor. Yeah. There will be no more yeah. uh, feast or famine. I'm no, feasting, baby. I'm done. And then you had to go yes. do something you didn't want to do. Oh, yeah. And this is so, yes, absolutely, man. I got a great one. But, and I got it. I need a phrase right because I love the guys that own this place. They saved my ass. Well, I love their so product. you're thankful for the job. But. The job was amazing in terms of giving me money. <laughs> but in terms of the scale of what I was doing before this job and what this job was, it was pretty kind of insane. And so, yes, I, what happened was, because uh, I was on Orange for four years by oh, yeah. that time, right? And I, I mean, I didn't know it was going to become that. But then by the, by the 
fifth season, by you know fifth, middle of that, I realized that my character they've done a pretty good job of making him kind of integral into the story, and so I had a pretty good sense that I'd be at least around uh, for the rest of the, the show whenever it was going to end. Yeah, and um, that must feel so good when you're reading a script too. You're like another year and I'm in a lot of this shit. Yeah, yeah, it like, was great. And then, you know, and, and if you're if you're lucky and, and, and fortunate enough as I was, like the, they called me at the beginning of season six and they said, listen, we've got this whole storyline that we want to do, but we need to know you're available, you know, and it was great because yeah. it worked oh, out. Yeah, that's great. It was like, and then, you know, anyone that's watched the show, it's like this stuff with me in Pensatucky and how I get to know her and on these road trips, it was really great. Um, and then by season seven, the last season, that was cool because they're like, yeah, you're you're going to be in the show for the year. Wow, so, so um, which is a great feeling, right? Through. You don't, yeah, hell yeah. You, from season one? Oh, no, season four, I season started. Season four, you started. Yeah, I came oh, in in okay. season four um, and then carried through all the way to the That's end. That's great. Yeah, and I mean, again, uh, greatest, one of the greatest moments of my life. Uh, I, I feel so blessed and fortunate to even have that opportunity. Yeah. You know, they're freaking hard to come by and... and um, but what would, you know, so I had that, you know, and, and by like, I'm going to holidays with my wife and, and meeting family all around the country and like every airport we're going through is like, Oh my God, are you Mike Houston? Yeah. Like it was cool. It was the first time I had been recognized yeah. all these things are amazingly happening. And then orange ends, you know, we finished, we wrapped shooting for that year. And you're doing the parties. You're doing. You're the trying. Premiere. You're trying because everybody's like, it's the last. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's, it's so you do the, it's well, over. That's the thing though. You do the premiere party. Yeah. Once the show comes out, like so, we would wrap in like January or February. The you know premiere would be in like July, June or July, but and then but the, <laughs> and see this is the thing. It's one thing when you know you're on a show that's going to continue. Sure. It's another thing when your show has announced that it's ending, right? <laughs> and and so you go, oh, okay. But I was again. Yeah. I'm like. Ah, pfft. I've been working for you four years. Like, what's I'm, next? I'm, let's yeah. go. Hey, what's yeah. next? Where's the offers? Come yeah. on, let's go. You know, and then, and then they didn't come. <laughs> and then, and then, uh, you know, I just, I, and I think, and I think a lot of actors that have been in these positions on shows where they're, they've played a character for a long time, right? You kind of get ignored for a while because people can't really see you outside gotcha. of that character. Yep. So typecasting is very real, even for people doing like a character actor role. Like oh yeah, doing. like I, I for sure. I, I mean, you're a big guy in general, so yeah. you get your roles are pretty much kind of like yeah, that kind big, of role. Bigger dudes and 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 prison guard, yeah, door guy, cop, that kind, like a police yeah. a lot. Um, and the good news, like that's the best part is like that's that's changed. So I'm finally. I had to age out of that, I think. Yeah, you know, and and literally just like in terms of maturity, <laughs> not not actual age, like maturity <laughs> age to just start like letting people know, like, hey, I can play an adult, sure, dad always... who cares about his kids and, <laughs> and would be really sad if they went away. I can do that. <laughs> I don't just yell at people and make dumb comments. Um, but yeah, and, and so when that ended, uh, and you know, I didn't have a lot of auditions either, and I was just like, what's happening? Oh. <laughs> and then you know, a year later. I'm, I'm like, uh, well, okay. That didn't happen the way I was expecting it, so I gotta go find some work. And I happened, you know, when I was working on Orange, at the same time, I was working at a bar yeah, um, in the city called Off the Wagon. And I know Off the Wagon. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm, gonna say, the wagon. I'm gonna say it by name because <laughs> it's a great bar. They were incredibly supportive of what, what was going on with me. Yeah. I will never have a bad word to say about those guys. Howie, who owns the bar, is an amazing human. Go to that bar, great bar. Anyway. And so I was working there while I was on Orange, and I happened to meet these guys. They were regulars, get to know them. They're young guys. He ends up opening one of the guys, Adam, opens um, a gumbo place in Brooklyn. And I knew that these guys were bringing. He was bringing his gumbo into us to try it when he was doing like food festivals. And yeah. so I was like, Adam, do you guys need help at the shop? And I was gonna try to help them do like catering and stuff. And I actually almost got him on Orange. As, oh, as, as, like I, I was, I was gonna try to get them as a special catering, because <laughs> we don't have to go into the details. But like when sometimes when you're shooting, uh, sometimes actors that have the means will actually hire a food truck or some sort of special thing for the crew. Yeah, you know, just say thank you and all yeah. that stuff. And and I was hoping to do that that, that year, and I, I couldn't pull it together. <laughs> um, but I wanted to do something. So flex, anyway, I had a what good, a flex out of it. I tell you what. You mean the guy that gumbo? plays Dixon? Gonna do brought gumbo in boys and gumbos for everybody? <laughs> Making all the stars look like shit. Yeah, 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 yeah. I can imagine. <laughs> yeah, all the, all the high ups are like, guy who like everybody up. can someone knock this guy, <laughs> knock him down <laughs> to 65 on the call list? <laughs> no more 56. <laughs> down. But um, 
Cause yeah, but anyway, because I had that relationship with him, when he opened his counter shop in Brooklyn on Atlantic Avenue, right across from the uh, uh, Brooklyn Detention Center, um, I was like, buddy, I'm struggling. And he's like, I can hire you on the counter. And I was like, sure. Damn. So I was working the counter shop uh, at, the at, gumbo at Gumbo Bros uh, two years after Orange is the New Black. And what made it hard, again, love the product, love the guys, love everything about it. But what sucked was people would come in all the time and be like, what? Yeah, yeah, dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What do you, wait, aren't you from where? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What are you doing here? And I'm yeah. just like, Are you part owner? Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> oh, is this your spot? And it's like, No. Uh, yeah, <laughs> oh, you're you know, like, Are you in like a, a gumbo for You're a while. helping out your buddy? And it's like, No. He's helping me out, and I'm I'm making a minimum I'm wage. Living in a van, uh, yeah, <laughs> out, down by the river, bro. Dude, I would be doing the whole. I would be doing the whole. This is like I got a, I got a Louisiana movie coming up. <laughs> I'm just this is all you I'm know. Playing, I just I'm playing. A, I'm playing a chef. <laughs> yeah, it's just, I gotta learn the. I, it's I, actually called Chef. I would. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. It was mine first. <laughs> Favreau stole it. I was it. up for that first. That yeah, asshole yeah. took it from me. Favreau <laughs> had the food truck idea. I had the gumbo idea. He, he won. He won. <laughs> it's like, hey, are you Mike Houston? I was like, I, I don't know what she'll tell me. <laughs> He's just start talking to the bad Louis. Dude, I, I saw a guy. The terrible water boy. <laughs> He's like, oh, dude. You know what that reminds me of? When I first came to visit here like oh four before I moved here, I went to a, uh, an Italian restaurant and there was a guy who was my waiter who is in a very, I'll tell you off air, a very uh, prominent Italian mafia movie. And I made a huge deal out of this guy. I was so excited to, he was like a B, like a C-level character in the sure. movie. But still, like I was, you know, I was really mm -hmm. into the movie. And it's mm -hmm. New York, and it's an mm -hmm. Italian restaurant. I'm taking a photo with him. This guy probably spit in my food. Because he probably... Was didn't it wobble like you. Was it Carbone? No, no but it was like <laughs> <laughs> fucking Carbone. It was Carbone, right? Because it's like I was. It's one thing at a what counter. It's food. It's food. It's food. It's kind of like you, where you know, at least it's the counter and they're gone. Yeah. He had to keep coming back to the table, uh, and I was like a kid uh, who just was like kept bringing it up, bringing yeah. it up. This guy's not worked in like fifteen oh, years, like Jesus bringing Christ. it up. That's oh funny. man, uh, poor poor fucking bad. He made probably a lot of money there, which is why he does it. But so you got to eat it a little bit. I mean, that's part of the allure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's like yeah. having big tits into your fit. Here's <laughs> when you have giant breasts and you work in the service industry. There's like you get the really great job, but you always have yeah. a money maker, and that's his money maker. Uh -huh. yeah. It's the Bronx tail yeah. for the waiter job. Oh right, you will always get an extra couple bucks. Hands down. Because we gave him a lot. I gave. I was broke and I gave him a lot of money. Yeah, just because right. I was a fucking guy from Bronx yeah, Tale. Yeah, I want right. him to be impressed by me. Yeah. You're just dropping lines from the I movie. love that you oh, wanted. Like, <clears throat> dude, I would have loved to have seen you doing this. <laughs> you wanted him to be impressed with you. Yeah. And he's like, I'm waiting on this guy. <laughs> he's like, this is the biggest mind fuck of my life. <laughs> and now that I've been in not positions as, as deep as X and had a role as big as yours or even a role as big as that. But it it's funny, like. If anyone ever notices me from a show, like a packed yeah. headlining show, if I if I was ever at a job, like back in the day, I, I don't work with the public now, but if they would see me there, it would be like, fuck, man. Like, that's that's the hard part, right? Is like, because you have to ask, it. well, and you have to ask yourself, I had to ask myself a question too. I was like, what am I, <laughs> is it about the fame part? Is it about... Why is this humiliating? Why yes. is it humiliating to be like I recognize you? And it's like because in my head I'm like because somehow <laughs> in my my wisdom of money saving <laughs> I didn't do enough to figure out how to not end up at a counter shop two yeah. years later, you know? Yeah. And you know, and you know this is and as, as entertainers like the money is so up and down and so in it's and worse out than sales. You don't know when you're going to have it. And so, you know, if I'm, I'll just be fucking honest because that's what this Please do. is about, right? Yeah. You know, there was a time on Orange where I was like, well, I don't know if this is going to happen again. You know, I thought maybe it's lightning in a bottle moment and I'm mm -hmm. only in New York for one time in my life. So I was like, well, I'm going to live like the New York actor who's working on a hit TV show. And so, so got to go out to dinner and, can, you know, taking Ubers and, and doing the fun things again, thinking that oh i'm already on this show i'm a recurring guest star for four years like i'm gonna work like this for from yeah. now on yeah and what a 
I mean, what an important lesson that all was for me because I mean, you know, it's interesting because then the pandemic happens. That's a whole other ball game. Sure. But like to go to have it happen before something like that to go. No, no. There doesn't have to be a, a catastrophic world event. It's just that you got to understand how the business really does work. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, I'm counting my blessings because like I've been very fortunate coming out of the pandemic and, uh, you know, even out of the strike, I, you know, I got a gig. <clears throat> and so it's like trusting that like the work's going to be there, but don't look at the money as anything other than it changes you though. Like, yeah, the money, yeah. like ha having the money, getting the money, not like I grew up without money. Yep. And then I had, I got, I had a job <clears throat> where one year I made oh, just an insane amount of money mm -hmm. and I was like, Oh yeah. Oh, this is this how it's going to be. Is, this is who I am now. I'm a guy yeah. with money. Yeah. And then when it goes away again, you're like, no, I'm just a Shit. fuck. I'm the same. And now how do I get back to that money? But I'm the same schlub. But like it's it's like you don't realize what it's going to do to you. And then uh, then when it, when it goes away, you're like, oh, okay. It's a nice kind of like. I'll, uh, I'll offer one caveat. Interestingly enough, though, with the. So because, you know, this was when the strike happened this year. And people, I think what really, really swung the 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 people in our favor was when people realized that like none of us are making tons of money oh it really did like we're making normal it. money yeah with the blow and, and five if, if I, you know if i'll yeah. be honest like if you look at what my salary was for the last season of orange is the new black the fourth season i was on it by the way and i was on every episode it was no different than what my parents make what? well the, yeah. at their job mm -hmm. <laughs> which i've been at i've been at my job for over 15 years yeah. they've been at their job for a so yeah. what they earn annually is a six-figure salary right Low six figure, yeah. very low. Well, that's what I made on Orange. <laughs> yeah. So I just literally worked a normal job. Yeah. <laughs> even though that job got me recognized all across the world. Sure. I have most of my Instagram followers are from the UK and Brazil. Yeah. You know, be, and so I was like, but yet, yet I'm supposed to then figure out how to live on that money. Mm hmm. As if I don't have money. I'm like, so that's what's kind of crazy is then. Well, I was going to say. The, I guess I was just expecting. To, well, I've reached that point. Like book my another reached job. Their point. Yeah. That's yeah. what I was going to say, too, about. But like, that's when I, I learned, like, entertainment is not that, dude. <laughs> no, dude. When, I, 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 was when I said I made a lot of money, it was a little bit more than my father makes. You know what well, I mean? Well, yeah, you never a lot thought you would ever like, be. My dad was a steel worker and he's a nurse now. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. yeah. So. <laughs> but exactly. to me, I was like. When you look at it. Yeah. Well, but to your point, like, when you don't have money. Money, right. When you grow up with very little of it, and then you have it in big moments, yeah. especially in, in entertainment and whatever we're doing, yeah. it's like I did it. You know. Well, that was the mind fuck I was talking about. Is like you know, not just having a little bit of money when you ne like going from having nothing to having be being able to just go, oh, I can go buy a bunch of toothpaste, yeah. like just little shit like that. Where yeah, you're like, yeah, you yeah. have to plan that out before. Now you don't. Now add that you just did what you set out to do, <laughs> right? For your whole like your whole life has been going towards getting a huge acting job, yeah. being on this show that's like on the pulse of society. Everyone's talking about it. It's critically acclaimed. It's popular. It's huge. Yeah. And you're on it. And then you lose it. That is the part where you have to go. I've been to the part where you're like, do I like this because I get attention from it? Or do did I like this because I thought maybe I could get famous from it? Or do I actually like yeah. doing this? Yeah. And you came to the conclusion that you actually like yeah, it. Yeah, and, and almost <laughs> I don't know if this is a positive or negative. Not just like, like I, I can't do anything else. Yeah. I, I've actually like I'm in it. It's it's interesting we're having this conversation now because I'm in a bit of a, a spot right now, right? Like I uh I have two jobs. I work at a restaurant and a bar. Um and you know the after the pandemic and the strike, like, you know, you had to figure out what to do. And yeah. so uh, I got a couple gigs doing that. And um, I've really I, I've had to ask myself a lot over the last like two or three years, especially the pandemic. I'll say the pandemic was for everybody. Sure. It just it just put a mirror up and yep. said, are you really doing what you want to be doing? And I, I feel very lucky because there was no chance of me having to say no. Like, I'm like, yeah, I'm, yes, I'm absolutely doing what I want to be doing. Uh huh. And even the stresses and the financial hardships, I know I'm doing the right thing because they suck, but they don't make me want to do something else. The biggest thing- The only I, thing I want to do is do something else so I can make money so I can keep doing this. Yeah, and that's the answer you're looking for. The problem I was having, and that took me a, a minute to get to what you're talking about, is the part where you're going, okay, so I am giving so much to this thing. Mm -hmm. 
I, uh, you know, I'm time away from my wife, time away from my kid, mm-hmm. uh, time away from doing something I want to be doing sometimes. Yeah, that isn't man. necessarily emailing 50 bookers or going to hang out at a comedy club that refuses to even audition <laughs> me. Yeah. And I'm, I'm saying to myself, okay, that's a lot of, I'm really taking into account the sweat equity involved in, in stand up. Because before it didn't matter. Before right. it was like, I'm going to go have five drinks. I'm going to go fucking talk to some hot chick that thinks I'm fucking great. I'm going to go talk to my buddies. We're going to go eat a late night diner meal. Yeah. I'm going to come home and sleep till 10 a.m. Yeah. and say, fuck it all. And I don't have that option anymore. Yeah. Now, now, like, you're like, I just want to do the work. Yeah. I mean, look, it's like, <laughs> do the work. did I ever want to own a house most of the time in this industry? No. Am I almost 50 now and going, man, it would be kind of nice to have somewhere I yes. didn't have to worry about. Yes, it does. Like, and so, yeah, it does. It, all of a sudden life, life changes yeah. and, and your priority, priorities change. And, um, but yeah, it's, it's still that though, for me, it's like, and th- you know, when I was joking about trying to <laughs> work for a, a tour site company, the idea was that I know I'm worth more than seventeen dollars an hour. I know that. I know that whatever I bring to you, to whatever you're trying to achieve, yeah. I'm worth more than seventeen. Yeah. Especially if it's in a space space where there's like some sort of entertainment where like people sure. are gonna have a good time with me, and I guarantee you they will come back to your business because of me. So I'm trying to figure that out. Like, how do I make my independent money just based on my personality? Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Outside of just the acting, where I get hired. To use that personality in different roles, you know, I and figured that's that out kind pretty, of. The, I figured out pretty quick how to do that. Oh yeah, just because uh, I don't get worked in the clubs like a lot of people do have been doing as long as me. So, so you, you, I you, wanted you to say do, you wanted to go to like the car dealerships and do. I, I want to oh. make sure that I am like, all right. So I know I'm charismatic. I I'm also know I'm this. How do I find a way yeah. to make money off that? That's uh, you know, a pivot from stand up, right? And then can I just book my own shit so I keep getting better without ever having to use any of the industry's yeah. paths. Yeah. You know, which is I wouldn't suggest that to anybody, but it just it's what it's happened. Out. Yeah. It's but you got it like you, you, and I mean look, it, you kind of get a taste of that too. It's like you make your you make your own way. Yeah. You know, I I I have lots of opinions about capitalism and money and and importance and all that stuff, but I will say one thing I do I have noticed clearly is that the people that I admire the most, the ones and the ones that are doing really great things and, and are succeeding are, are ones that work pretty hard for it, you know? And, yeah. And we all work hard. That's the other some thing. Some people to, do, they're obsessed. Some people, about yeah. It. And, and again, it depends on what their end game is too. Yeah. You know, like I watch, <laughs> I watch Chris, I watch Chris Hemsworth all the time with this, <laughs> this like idolatry, envy. There's so many things about that man. I, I look forward to working with him one day because, like, I just keep thinking, your day is not my day, right? Oh, Chris Hemsworth, yeah. Like, but, like, from what – at what point in his life was it not my day? Like, to look like that, to, to just exist like that, his whole day is just about being – Preserving that. Exactly, right? Yeah, and so it's like, this guy yeah. does not go to Michelin star restaurants. Like, I want to go to Michelin star restaurants. He might go to them. Yeah, but that's not no. You know, this is this. Yeah, he doesn't get right? to enjoy. It, it's it's oh, amazing yeah. to watch guys like that do that, and yeah. and you know, and, and Pacino's it, really enjoying it. Oh yes, he oh, is. Apparently, Nicholson's yeah. really enjoying it. Yeah, Paul well, Giamatti, he's really enjoying <laughs> it. Giamatti, yeah, yeah. The ugly guys are really enjoying it. Yeah, really, Giamatti is, is aging beautifully. I love he, he looked great last night. He looked yeah. like a guy that deserved to be nominated for an Oscar and deserves to win it, and said, "Man, probably won't," but. I love it. I'm still fucking Paul Giamatti. <laughs> I, uh, okay, so what about like f- future of the business? Mm-hmm. Let's talk about that before I have to jump into, yeah. you know, talking about some other things. But like the future of the business, Ed and I talk about this all the time. Like entertainment business? Yeah, because, you know, AI has been around forever, but it just started to really yeah. come up during the strike. Yeah. Like really, people mm-hmm. were talking about mm-hmm. it a lot. Yeah. And now you're looking at, you're going to start losing, if, if you already haven't, which I'm sure I know I have, you're going to start losing parts to people that have more TikTok or Instagram followers than you, <laughs> uh, or YouTube yeah. subscribers. So yeah. you're going to, so you, the craft itself and getting the job has changed drastically to a point where I think for me at 43 now, yeah. is really hard to go, okay, I really want to, I really want to do that. Because Ed started late. 
Like Ed yeah. is around your age, but he's only been doing stand up ten years now, eight years. Not even, yeah. Yeah. Eight years. So wow. it's like mm-hmm. he's not seen any of what I right. saw when I started, right? At all. Like there's nothing left no. that was that. No. So do you find that too in acting and what? what you know, that's an interesting still, question. Like, like I, you're just on Law and Order. Like you, you book roles every year. Yeah. You book stuff, but yeah. nothing as big as Orange since then. Yeah. Right? I mean, uh, yeah. I, I have one thing that I booked that, in terms of like notoriety will absolutely kind of match that. Oh, awesome. The experience was, and I'll tell you about it, but, um, you know, uh, it's interesting. I worry about AI, if I'm being, for younger actors. Okay, I'll use this. I saw Poor Things the other night, okay? The movie that won, you know, Emma Stone and Oscar last night. And if you haven't seen it, it's it's an incredible movie. It's wacky. It's... um, I don't want to mispronounce his name right now. The director who did Lobster. And, uh, oh, uh-huh. uh, I forget. His I'm going to say it wrong, and I don't want to say it wrong. If yeah. I'm going to say it, I want to say it right because he deserves that. Mm-hmm. But anyway, this guy's an amazing director, and he does this movie, Poor Things. And it's like nothing I've ever seen. And all I kept thinking is AI could not make this movie. Yeah. It could not make this movie. It's a, it'd be impossible. The, the way his mind, the way he saw it, the way he shot it, the way they worked, the way Emma worked. There's no way AI could do that, and I and the fact that it did so well, in in a commercial space like in the Oscars and whatnot, gave me some hope because it was like, we can you can do AI movies and they will. You know, sure. did you guys read this story? Tyler Perry, right down in Atlanta, was about to make an eight hundred thousand uh, dollar purchase of studio space because he was going to build this big studio for his system. Um, and when AI, I forgot which AI company came out and said, we've developed this tool that you can literally speak a scene and the set will just, it'll just, poof. you can say what you want and it'll show up on wow. screen. And the day after Tyler Perry pulled the offer, he was like, I'm not building studio space yeah, until we figure this out. Because, yeah. oh, wow. And I was like, oh my God, he's making an interesting point because like, you're not gonna need studio space. But then again, wow. I see him with like poor things and there are a lot of films out there like the, this year um, especially in the foreign film category, you watch these films, they cannot be done by AI. Yeah. You won't have the impact. It will not do. And and I read some another interview with another actor who said, you know, people, human beings will not accept AI movies. Like, we are, we're not going to go to a movie knowing it was made by AI with the idea of, like, I'm going to be entertained by that. Do you know there's some real, there's some Although, AI OnlyFans models making, like, three grand a month? Good. Really? I, I started following <laughs> a couple AI. Uh, and I said... Dude, you should see my Instagram. My Instagram. You your wife will be mad at you because it's a fucking AI. Yeah, <laughs> it doesn't no have a emotions. pulse. She doesn't have a pulse. <laughs> she has no soul. Come on. You can tell. I well, I wanted to know. I wanted to know what it like looks like, and and I, and you could spot it now. I oh, could yeah. spot it. It's got well, that's that thing. Your eyes are get trained. Because I, I mean, I'm glad we jumped off an AI. That, that was great. I I was more thinking about for you, like, because for me, losing roles. Where it's like, oh, I have zero control over that, and yeah. I don't think I had much control over it before. I don't. I, I, don't we get me not, wrong. Uh, let's be honest. We don't have any control over any of it. But at least I think in the at '90s and in the two thousand early aughts, yeah. you think like, oh, but if I'm good at something, that might edge me into yeah. getting something. Yeah. And I don't feel that way at all anymore. I no, think I could walk yeah. into an audition and mumble it through, and if I got the look or if I got the right people behind me, I feel like I could. I True, could get a job. but you could also, you know, like I, I, I felt the same way too. But I mean, sometimes you make you make certain choices in that in that moment in that audition, and that and to your point though, that's it, right? It's, yeah. It's the look. Like one thing I came to realize, and it took me a long time to get there, and I wish I'd have gotten there a little sooner, was that the no control part mm-hmm. too. The work is good. It your work is good. It's just that you know if you've ever written something, which I'm sure you have, and 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 uh, you know. When you're telling story, you have a picture in your head, yep. yeah. And so, Does when someone shows up, match the picture. The only in thing, my the head. only thing that you can't control in any way is like, let's say you go in, you give a banging audition, Doesn't you look, matter. you look really yeah. close to like yeah. what this guy's thinking, right? And he's like, oh man. This guy's great, and he really fits kind of what I'm thinking. And then the next guy comes in, does the same thing you did, both good work, but this guy looks exactly like he has in his yeah. head. He's like, he's holy it. shit, that's him. That's the guy, <laughs> yeah. right? You can't. You can't do anything no, about that. Do, so you do all you can it. do is go in and do your best work, but then you then have those conversations about, well, shit, how am I going to earn money 
just auditioning, which you can't, you know. Yeah. So it's like, well, the best. Like, how many? Uh, so how many Instagram followers do you have, Josh? Yeah. Well, listen. Let show myself out. I did this movie. Did they ask you that in audition. They are starting to. Yeah. Because it, we're talking about like the can. roles I'm going up for are obviously very different from yeah. from Mike's, but at the same time. The roles that are like a few lines in a show, yeah. they want to try to get those to people that will plug it on their social yeah. media because wow. you can't like that's not going to make or break the project. Like I'd have to level up to where they actually need you to read a lot of dialogue and be able to be serviceable on set. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then a whole variable other reasons why you wouldn't get it come into play mm -hmm. that we could talk about. Endlessly, but you know, that's in, I, I didn't even think about that. And they and do it, ask I, that in auditions. Be, now. I, I could be very lucky. Wow. I, it's probably because I'm I'm, I'm fortunate because I was like, wow. I, I mean, I haven't had to. I haven't. You know, clearly the roles I audition for are usually guest stars or series leads or whatever. Yeah. So the few lines here and there anymore. But like when I started out, like that's what I was doing is like Blue Bloods and you know any New York show, any cop show, anything that did yeah. a lot. Like I had at least a couple lines here and there. I didn't think about because to your point, when you started doing stand up, right. And what you were starting with, like social media didn't exist the way it does now from yeah. when I started even. And so the idea of like having followers right. being what gets you jobs. I remember when this conversation started. Yeah. You know, it was actually around 2012 was kind of like when things were starting to move where you were like, yeah. Do you hear about this person getting a job yeah. because of how many people follow him on Twitter? You well, know? it's like the Point Break remake. They, I know they specifically gave it to like a, one of the oh. one of the roles, not a big, big role, uh -huh. but big enough to where the person was a YouTuber and, and they mentioned it on their YouTube. Like just, yeah. and it's a it, the business model is a business. Yeah, model. exactly. Yeah. Like if that's how you're gonna and and look, we see Broadway put people into roles that I, oh, they're like shows now made to make sure they can plug and play. That's it. Some random. They're trying to make their. They're, they're trying to recoup investment, and the the mm -hmm. fastest way you can do that. But the great thing is, you see, you know, you see studios like. Um, <laughs> this is awful. I can't even remember the studio that did poor things, but. Um, who the people that are behind those kind of projects? A24. Like, is it well? A twenty four is one of them. I, I love A twenty four. Yeah, you know, yeah. and and mm -hmm. I think that they are doing it the right way. Like exactly. they're like they take huge swings. They're great. They do not worry about taking a crash on one project because they got another one in the pipeline it's going to recoup well that was part of i think someone's speech associated with what you're talking about oh yeah uh it's kind of you know been around <laughs> the news cycle uh he was saying i forget the guy's name but you could look it up uh that we should stop making these 200 million dollar movies and oh, why yeah. not make it was the, it was know, the guy a that won uh, movie, a four million dollar movie it was the writer uh, who won for um american fiction the, yes. The, oh, yeah. The writer. That was great. Yeah. And he. Uh, yeah. He had a great. It was no, great. I, I saw it like I saw it on closed captioning when I was bartending last night, and he said, "Yeah, instead of that, let's make uh, fifty-two million dollar movies." Yeah. It was like, yeah. You know what I was thinking. I was saying this. I went and saw Dune in IMAX, and I would love to see, like, it would have been amazing if they broke Dune up into like a series, almost like Game <laughs> of Thrones kind of thing. But only in IMAX. In yeah. IMAX. Where you in go the to theater. IMAX once a month. Mm -hmm. Every three months, you go to see a new Dune. It's wow. Like, yeah, it's like, amazing. I don't know what's coming up next on this podcast, but man, you might you might have segued into something pretty brilliant there. I mean, why not go back to the 30s where everyone had to go to the movie theater to see their well, the right. shit they wanted to see? Right. And I think it's like, that's what that would the, be. The, the thing about IMAX, though, is when you go and you see like Dune in IMAX, you're like, dude, this is... It's, I, I'm, it's to, to yeah. even consider watching this on my television is a disservice to, to the problem. I'm going on Friday <laughs> to see Dune 2 at 3 p.m. because yeah. it was the only day available that I could get the two favorite seats of my, my I have two favorite seats in the IMAX theater here at Lincoln yeah. Square and it was the only day I could get those two seats it's and, impossible and because, yeah. it's impossible to get those because seats. I missed the first Dune because of the pandemic because it came out during the pandemic oh. and some people were brave enough I was a candidate to die, so I was like, you know, I'm gonna wait for that uh, vaccine. Yeah. Uh, and so I, we waited. It came out on. We watched it on my television, and I looked at Jenny. I was like, we're not seeing this again unless it's no an IMAX. Way. Yeah, yeah. Like yeah. it is. <laughs> I think I watched it on the TV too. Yeah. Yeah. I that's why and I mean, I'm lucky. I have a nice big TV, and, still, and yet yeah. I was like, and then that also gave me hope, because I thought, as long as you keep making movies like that, where it's like, I don't. I will pay you yeah. $35 for that experience. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Totally. Happily. I think we yeah. dropped, I mean, because we drove to the Paramus. We live up in oh, Washington right Huts. Yeah. We drove out to Paramus because I couldn't. That's a those, great one, too. Those Lincoln Center ones are. No, those they're, they're I mean, you got to get like two months in advance. You got It's yes. crazy. <laughs> but so we drove out there, and it was probably $50. It's probably 70 I mean, the whole thing was probably over a $200 oh, yeah. a day. But mm -hmm. worth it. It was like going to the One theater. Other, you literally do, going exactly. to the theater. Yeah. Would do it. Any yeah. And that's would do the thing, it once man. A month. That's my favorite. That's my argument for capitalism. Is like, look, if you provide a service, 
and I pay you a bunch of money and I walk away going, I would have done that again then yep. and I will the pay problem? that again, then then it's working. Yeah. It's when you gouge me for the extra two inches exactly. on my airplane seats exactly. you can make an additional million exactly. dollars a year. Yeah, yeah, you yeah, fucking yeah. scumbag piece of shit. I used to work for Disney. <laughs> when I was in college, I did an internship and I worked for Disney and that's where I learned the whole idea. I thought at Disney for me and, and people have their opinions, but I think the master's capitalism. Because oh, they're, they're what they provide, when everything. I go to their park, and I spend a bunch of money, and like when I worked at the park, and I saw people spend a bunch of money, and their whole idea is that nobody leaves here unhappy. Exactly. Because they're, some people are saving their entire yeah. year for this. I read yeah. a book about the way Disney does their business, and it was one of the most fascinating books about business I've oh, ever read. Oh, I can imagine, read. man. I huh. love it. it Gus, end, end, user, don't, end user is number one. They don't mess around. They Everything is thought out ahead yeah. of time. Yeah. And everything is perfectly planned, and they plan for every situation you could think of. <laughs> yes, including uh, including strikes. <laughs> <laughs> what? Uh, okay, so you yeah. just did a movie. A movie mm -hmm. that I saw. What is it? It's called She Said. Yeah, she said she I said? did uh, back in uh, 2017. Is when I yeah. And then you have a project coming out soon. Yeah. So um, next in August. Uh, there's a movie coming out uh, called Horizon: An American Saga. It's Kevin Costner. Yeah, yes, it's a pretty, I've heard of yeah, this. Oh, big, oh my big, god! I yeah. saw the at the, the trailer. Yeah. Looks so great. I'll be um, I'll be in the second film of that series. Holy shit, dude! Uh, yeah, thank you. Yeah, I heard that's a, it's going to be a banger. Sick job! I've been hearing yeah, yeah. so many cool things. You know, about you talked it. about it earlier about like the job. And he directed and, like, you in it. Yeah, yeah, Whoa. yeah. And he and you know Boy. he's lovely and he's one of the best I've worked with and and just kind and thoughtful and and I mean I was just obsessed with watching his uh, process process and his attention to detail. There was a day, and this is also, he's self-producing, right? Well, At that's the big thing, is he like put everything on the line yeah, for Yeah, he mortgaged oh, property. Yeah, everything, yeah. Oh, wow. And it was kind of fascinating to be there with him and him telling that story to other people and how the last time he did that was with doing Dances with Wolves, <laughs> yeah, used his own money. Pretty big success. <laughs> yeah, and so I was like, this guy's really good at betting on himself. <laughs> wow. You know, like, so I was like, I'll, I'll take that bet. And um, But to know that and like, what was amazing is, you know, you work for producers a lot and, you know, they've got money in the game. The time is money. When you work for a guy who's financing the whole thing, we sat there one day for like five hours in, in our chairs just hanging out. And by the way, we're at the base of uh, Zion National Park. That's where we're shooting this western. Oh, so we're just dude. in this immaculate space. Dude. And... Um, we're waiting for five hours and we're just kind of like, and there's no rush though. Like no one's running around yeah. like, yeah. what's going on? And they were like, well, you see that cloud? And I was like, yeah. He goes, well, Kevin's just waiting. He needs he needs this one piece of sunlight to come out for this shot. And I think he's just going to wait it out. Wow. And I was like, that must what be a nice. blessing. What is this, the 80s? Yeah, what a gift <laughs> to be like, wow, well, wow, what happens when Did you Bob use Evans your producing this? And wow. then, but then on top of that, because of his, how calm he is, Everyone's calm. Yeah. yeah. It really was lovely. And so anyway, that movie's coming out. That's a great story. The two series starts out in June uh, with the first movie. Chapter two comes out in August. That's when I'm in, August 16th. Oh. And then the idea is that he's going to shoot three and four. Like right? There's going to be four films to this oh. whole thing. So kind of to what you were talking about earlier oh. about the big epic. Love yeah. that. And then, you know. I think it's an, I it's an IMAX. Yeah, right? it is. Yeah. So, so it's I four, yeah. four full-length IMAX films. Dude, we got to get together and I'll go watch you in the yeah. second one. That would be amazing. Yeah, and then, you know. As things happened, it, yeah, who knows? I might end up even in a later one. Uh, cool. But it was it was an incredible job. One of be it was the best one of the best jobs I've ever had. It also kind of brought me back to it can just happen. trusting the process. Yeah, it can and happen. Like, yeah, and yeah. also, like you said earlier, how we we have this goal, and we're, we're if you ask me, I achieved everything I wanted to do the day that my mom said you should be an actor mm -hmm. and I heard that and I was like okay you've done it buddy and yeah. then what I wanted to accomplish I've had the fortune to do a lot of things close but doing this Costner movie working with this guy that I've watched every fucking movie that he has been in yeah I've grown up with this guy yeah. and then to be there <clears throat> and be directed by him and also complimented by him and embraced you know with all my other castmates and there this is an incredible cast of people i got to work with legends on this movie and so just being in that space and being in utah and and on location you know like i, I, the I, creme I creme. accomplished the dream yeah that's the dream <clears throat> so i hit that and i was like look if you told me tomorrow it's over okay i can i can accept that but then i lied i was ah! like oh, i'm so full of shit <laughs> i gotta be in the because now i'm like no no man i want to get back into another movie <laughs> yeah. where come on yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> plug where you're at mike tell everyone where they can find you okay so uh, i'm on instagram uh the big fella all lowercase 
Um, that's pretty much the only one I use nowadays. I love it. Yeah, I, the TikTok is I'm still figuring that out. I'm a, like I said, I'm you just work with Costner. Fuck that, dude. Don't <laughs> stoop to that shit. <laughs> well, there's like you know, it's so funny. No, there's, there's, this, and, there's this unfortunate on conceit that I have at times going. I don't need a yeah, TikTok. That was just some Costner movie. You'll see me on there. <laughs> yeah, you motherfuckers, you'll <laughs> right, see me. Right, right. <laughs> uh, I'm also gonna be in the Joker sequel, but uh, oh, cool. you're gonna barely see me on that one. Doesn't matter. <laughs> but I got hired for it. Yeah, That's what's yeah, important. Hey, getting hired. You're on IMDb. You're there. Brother. Cutting room floor uh, <laughs> victim on that one. You can follow me at Josh Ricardo. Go to joshricardo.com. Eddie. Follow me at Ed McGowan Comedy on Instagram, edmcgowan.com. See all my show dates. We got an email address. Yeah, right in. Uh, write us an email. Uh, it's workingclasscomedians at gmail. Tell us about all your actor stories. <laughs> Do you know Kevin Costner? Probably Tell us not. about it. Yeah. <laughs> Kevin Costner, right in. Come on. Uh, we'll see you guys again next week. You can listen to us on all major podcast platforms every Wednesday. You can follow us on Instagram at Working Class Holes. Also, make sure you watch the full show on YouTube. All you got to do is type in Working Class Holes. And please don't forget to rate us five stars and tell a friend. Come on.